this engine has a quick drain plug. Some engines will have a just an oil drain plug. If you have a quick drain plug, you can use a hose or something else to attach to it and try and keep things a little neater. I'm pointing at the quick drain plug there. Actually, it's a quick drain valve. And the way that operates is you push up on the valve and rotate it about a quarter turn and it locks and the oil comes out. As you'll see here, as the hose slips down, you'll see the oil coming out. Oops. So I'll just grab some tape here and tape it in place. The oil should be warm before draining. You can either run the engine, let it cool for about 10 minutes and then drain the oil, or do as I did and I plugged in my oil pan heater to heat the oil. Okay. Everybody has their own way of trying to catch the oil coming out of the oil filter when you go to remove it. This is a turbocharged engine. There's about 11 more hoses on it than a normally aspirated engine. So I have my own challenges. What I found is I take a, take a paper cup and things generally only fit one way. But this paper cup will wet, there it goes. That'll wedge right in there. Now I'm probably going to be standing in the picture when I do this. Um, you need a pair of side cutting pliers. Cut the safety wire off. Okay, I like to throw this away as soon as I remove it. Very sharp. Now, oil filter has a one inch nut on it. So, take the one inch wrench. There we go. Now, on my engine, it only comes out of there one way. And that's down through the bottom. Around the fuel pump. Out past the engine mount. And finally, it's out. Now, I like to put the time and the hours that I last changed the filter, the date and hours, and I'll put that on the new one when I install it. Okay, so we got our filter, we got the date, hours on it. Now we need to put some Dow Corning on it. Dow Corning comes in a little green tube and it's a uh, kind of clear white, uh, it's opaque, a little opaque goop. We just rub that around on the gasket. And now I got to go reverse way to get this filter back in. Now remember the paper cup is still there. I want to leave that there until the very last because it's catching any drips that are coming out of there at this point. Yeah. 
All right, now that that's on, I can take this cup out here. Being careful not to turn it upside down. And that's got oh, a quarter cup of oil in it. So I've turned this filter until it's just bottomed out. Now it says to torque it 16 to 18 foot-pounds. I used to have a torque wrench that measured that, but it broke, so I just go a quarter turn. I use a calibrated elbow. It's more than a quarter turn, more like a half turn. There we go. So next we have to tie wire it. The oil filter gets safety wired to one of these tabs and over here to the hole in this uh, oil pressure sensor. So um, if I use this one here, go over to there, that'll, that's in the direction that wants to keep it tight. So that's where you wanna tie wire it. Okay, after safety wiring, make sure you take the extra loop here and bend it over so that someone that's reaching around the engine compartment is not going to cut themselves on the end of that safety wire. Okay, the oil suction screen looks like this. Just a screen, I pulled it out. There's completely clean, no debris or anything. When you go to pull it out, it's probably gonna be stuck in the plug here. So when you pull it out, it'll look like you don't have enough room to completely remove it because the uh, gas collator's in the way. So just pull the plug off and then you can pull the screen out separately. Now before you start this project, make sure that you have a Lycoming uh, oil suction screen gasket. It's a crush gasket. It's one inch ID, inch and a quarter OD. Now, when you reinstall this, this is one of the few, if only, things that I know of on the Lycoming engine that does not get torqued. It gets a rotational value instead of a torque value. So you put it in until you bottom out against this gasket, the crush gasket, and then you rotate it 135 degrees. That's it. There's no torque setting. Then go ahead and safety wire it, which will be a nightmare because it was a nightmare getting the safety wire off. Um, if you don't swear, if you're one of those people that don't swear, you might start learning a few swear words because you'll probably need them to get the tie wire on and off. Oh, and by the way, the nut on here is a 5 8 So have a 5 8 inch uh, wrench ready before you go. Okay, now that you've got the oil filter on and safety wired, you've closed the quick drain valve and you've replaced uh, clean the suction screen and safety wired that then you can start putting your oil in I like to use this style of a filler thing where you can close it put it in and then open it and you don't have to worry about it dripping it comes out now my plane uh, I put in six quarts it takes up to eight any more than six it'll blow it out the breather it seems so uh, just six quarts now there's a couple of, there's a couple of things you can do while 
you wait for the uh, oil to go in the engine in between quarts as it drains. Cut open your oil filter, put in a vise here. I've got this oil filter cutter, it's got a can opener type thing there. Squeeze it till it pierces it. Go around once. And that opens it up. Have a bucket ready. So I'm going to let it drain before I cut the element out of here first. Set that in there. Yeah, there's a lot in here still. Be nice if your bench was completely clean before you do this, but it is what it is. I've got this knife that I use for cutting the paper off the uh, filter. All right, once you get the paper cut, you get a pair of pliers or something to tear it out of here. I did it right. Okay, if you did it right, this filter will come out the media. Okay, and then you want to look in the pleats for any metal, any debris. Nothing obvious here. And then what I do, I take it and I put it in this, in a bucket that has some uh, solvent from my parts washer. And I rinse out the media really good. All right, so once we've rinsed this out really good, we look in there for any aluminum and stuff. Take a magnet, go down in the bottom, and see what you pick up. Now this one has, you won't be able to see, it's real tiny, little bitty tiny, a few flakes. Um, that's not enough to worry about. If you pull this up and it's got a big old wad of uh, metal on there, then you've got serious problems. So this filter is clean with no metal in it. So that's a good sign. I'll put that in the logbook.